Hello friends. In the previous video, we understood how the real gases in this world behave. Since the calculations for real gases are way too complex, we introduced the concept of ideal gases for better modeling. An ideal gas is composed of many number of molecules. These molecules can be considered as small spherical balls moving randomly in all directions. They keep on colliding with each other and with the walls of the system. All the molecules are considered negligibly small. Therefore, no forces of electrostatic as well as gravitational interaction come into play. The molecules collide with each other or with the walls elastically and therefore no kinetic energy is lost between two collisions. After a while, a steady state reaches. In steady state, any two units of volume have similar properties like pressure, temperature, number of molecules and molecular velocity distribution. In this series of videos, we will understand mathematically the equations that govern an ideal gas. This equation is called the ideal gas equation or the ideal gas law. Before we dive deep into the ideal gas law, let us understand a few terms. The first one is the Avogadro's number. Lorenzo Romano Amido Carlo Avogadro or simply Avogadro define the Avogadro's number as 6.02214076 into 10 raised to the power 23. If we sum it up to three decimal places, it is 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23. Avogadro's number is simply just a number. Just like a pair is a two, a dozen is 12, a million is one followed by six zeros, a billion is one followed by nine zeros. Similarly, Avogadro's number is 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23. The symbol that is used for Avogadro's number is Na. It is simply used to represent quantities. But the question is, why did Avogadro come up with such a number? What is so special about this number? To answer that, let us go back to the concept of mole. Here mole does not mean an informant or a spy. It refers to a number or quantity of a substance. We define one mole as the number of atoms in 12 gram of carbon-12. Carbon-12 is an isotope of carbon. It has 6 electrons, 6 neutrons and 6 protons. One mole or 12 grams of carbon-12 contains 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 atoms. In general, one mole of any substance contains 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles of that substance. For example, if we have one mole of water, it means it has 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 molecules of water. One mole of biscuits will have 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 biscuits. If we compare one mole of carbon-12, one mole of water, and one mole of biscuits. Each of these will have 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 respective particles. That means carbon-12 will have atoms of carbon-12, water will have molecules of water and one mole of biscuits will have, well, so many biscuits. It is quite obvious that the mass of each mole is different because the mass of each particle is different. One mole of carbon-12 weighs 12 grams. One mole of water weighs 18 grams. One mole of biscuits. Well, if just the biscuit weighs over a gram, then one mole of biscuits will weigh trillions and trillions of grams. Since one mole comprises of 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles, we can say that there are 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles in one mole or 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles per mole or 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles in Na. Do you understand now why this number is so important? Why Avogadro emphasized so much on this number? Well, one of the reasons is that I don't have to say this number again and again. So Na or Avogadro's number 
is equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 because each mole of a substance has 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles of that substance or Na particles of that substance. I assume we have understood the concept of Avogadro's number. So let's move on to the ideal gas law. A lot of experimental conclusions contributed to the ideal gas law. Robert Boyle in 17th century defined Boyle's law. Jacques Charles in the 18th century defined Charles' law. In the 19th century, Amido Avogadro defined Avogadro's law. Again in the 19th century, Joseph Gay Lussac defined Gay Lussac's law. All of these experimental conclusions were combined by Benoit Paul Emile Clapeyron. In 1834, he gave the equation of the ideal gas as PV is equal to nRT. Here, P represents the pressure exerted by the molecules on the walls of the container. V is the volume of the container that confines the ideal gas. N is the number of moles of the ideal gas. R is the universal gas constant. And T is the temperature of the ideal gas. The pressure exerted by an ideal gas results from the collisions between the molecules and the walls of the container. Each collision results in some force on the wall of the container and pressure exerted is nothing else but force per unit area. The volume of the container is the property of freedom of molecules and their movement. So the molecules of the ideal gas move freely and occupy the entire space of the system. The number of moles depends on the quantity of the substance taken. The temperature T results from the speeds of the molecules. The higher the speeds, the more will be the temperature of the system. Lastly, R, which is the universal gas constant, does not depend on anything. Its value is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin in the SI units. It does not depend on its surroundings and it does not depend on the gas taken. Remember while using this equation to take all the parameters in respective units. If pressure P is taken in pascals, volume V in cubic meters, number of moles, well, in number of moles, temperature in Kelvin, then R universal gas constant must be taken as 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. There's another common system of units in which pressure P is taken in atmospheric units or ATM where 1 ATM is 101325 pascals. Volume V is taken in liters. Temperature is still taken in Kelvin and N, which is number of moles, still in number of moles. Here, the value of the universal gas constant R is 0.00821 ATM liter per mole per Kelvin. The ideal gas law may be modified and used in various forms. One of these forms represents number of molecules. Since each mole contains 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 molecules or Na molecules, we can write the number of molecules as moles multiplied by the Avogadro's number. So N is equal to N Na. Soak in all the different Ns before it gets confusing. The first capital N is the number of molecules. The second small n is the number of moles and the last Na, obviously, the Avogadro's number. And thus, the number of moles can be written as number of particles divided by the Avogadro's number. When we substitute this in the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT, we get PV is equal to NRT by NA. Now there are two constants in this equation, R, the universal gas constant, and Na, the Avogadro's number. Let us combine these two constants and produce a new one, Kb, the Boltzmann constant. Its value is R divided by Na, which is 8.314 divided by 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23, or 1.3806452 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Summing up to two decimal places, Kb can be written as 
1.38 into 10 raised to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So the equation becomes PV is equal to N KBT. If we compare both the equations, PV is equal to NRT and PV is equal to N KBT, in both these equations, P represents the pressure of the gas, V represents the volume, T represents the temperature. In the first equation, small n represents the number of moles, while in the second equation, capital N represents the number of molecules or number of particles. In the first equation, capital R is the universal gas constant, whose value is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, while in the second one, Kb is the Boltzmann constant, whose value is 1.38 into 10 raised to the power minus 23 joules per Kelvin. The ideal gas law may be represented in various other ways. One of those is in terms of molar mass and density of the gas. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of the substance. It is represented by m0. So molar mass of carbon-12 is 12 grams, while that of hydrogen gas is 2 grams. If the total mass of the substance is given as capital M, then number of moles can be written as total mass of the substance divided by molar mass of that substance. For example, 36 grams of carbon-12 has 3 moles of carbon-12, while 6 grams of hydrogen gas has 3 moles of hydrogen gas. The number of moles and the number of particles is identical in both the cases, but they differ in mass. This is because bigger particles have higher mass, while smaller particles have lesser mass. Let us substitute the number of moles in the ideal gas law. We get PV is equal to MRT by M0. Take V on the other side and get P is equal to MRT by VM0. Here M by V or mass upon volume is nothing else but mass per unit volume or density. Replace M by V by rho and get pressure is equal to rho RT by M0. This is another form of the ideal gas equation. Depending on the scenario, we may use any of these three equations. Remember to use them on an ideal gas only. An ideal gas obeys postulates of kinetic theory of gases. In this video, we glanced over the concept of Avogadro's number, the concept of mole, and we discussed in detail the various forms of the ideal gas law. In the upcoming video, we will discuss the experiments that led to the formation of the ideal gas law. See you then. Avogadro's number is equal to 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 per mole. We define one mole as the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. One mole of any substance contains 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles of that substance. PV is equal to NRT is the ideal gas law. Here P is the pressure exerted by the ideal gas. V is the volume of the container. N is the number of moles of the ideal gas. R is the universal gas constant, whose value is 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin. T is the temperature of the ideal gas. PV is equal to NKBT is another form of the ideal gas law. Here P is the pressure exerted by the ideal gas. V is the volume of the container. T is the temperature of the ideal gas. N is the number of particles of the ideal gas. KB is the Boltzmann constant, whose value is equal to the universal gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. This comes out to be 1.38 into 10 raised to the power minus 23 joule per Kelvin. P is equal to rho RT by M0 is another form of the ideal gas law. Here P is the pressure exerted by the ideal gas. Rho is the density of the ideal gas. R is the universal gas constant, T is the temperature of the ideal gas, and M0 is the molar mass of the ideal gas.